I always feel so cringe whenever we talk about anything as luxury. I love gold. But this is what we're doing today. Here's the 16 best entry level luxury watches, according to me. Before we get into the video, I think it would be helpful to first define entry level. What is entry level? Because I think there's two different ways of looking at it. So the first way, entry level means affordable watches that are a good place to begin. Almost like a starter watch. Like your starter car probably isn't the car you still drive today. And then there's a second way of looking at it, which is a higher end watch that falls in the lower end of the price point of a certain brand. It's the entry point into a certain brand. But just because it's a starting point doesn't make it any less special or luxury. The second definition is what we're going to be working from today. A lot of my favorite watches fall into the entry level category because they're usually stainless steel and a bit more simple, so not high complications. A bit more go anywhere, do anything. I really hope this whole beginning doesn't sound horrible and pretentious. I think that luxury means different things to different people. For me, buying a brand name butter or a brand name bag of chips or crisps, as the English say, is luxurious. So I, I really wouldn't pay too much attention to the things I say. <laughs> My idea of a luxury watch brand begins around 500 pounds, and that's big bucks. I, I know it's easy to forget it in the watch world, but that's a lot of money, and it goes up from there. I've, I've ordered these from cheapest to most expensive, and let's get into it. There are two Tissot watches I really want to touch on. So the Tissot PRX and the Gentleman. So the PRX Quartz or the Automatic 80 are a great place to start. This watch is available in two sizes. So a 35 millimeter variation and a larger 40 mil with a few different colors as well. I feel like you could dress these up, you could dress them down, and it has great specifications as well. 100 meters of water resistance, automatic movement with the Powermatic 80. You really can't argue with the PRX. I also just needed to quickly highlight the Tissot Gentleman. Although it isn't the watch of the moment like the PRX, these are still so great. A lot of collectors credit their love of watches to Seiko, and there's so much awesomeness to choose from their catalog. There are some Seiko watches that almost feel like a happy medium between Grand Seiko and Seiko, and the Presage, and I'm more thinking the Presage Cocktail Time, are those kinds of watches. Elegant, well-made. Or for something a bit sportier, the Seiko 5 GMT is one of my favorite watches money can buy right now. 420 pounds, functional, sporty, good looking mechanical watch. I swear, I'm gonna buy one of these very soon. There's a few awesome nuggets in the Hamilton catalog. The Murph, the Khaki Navy Scuba, but for an entry level, it has to be the Khaki Field Mechanical. These almost feel unreasonably well-priced at 545 pounds on the NATO, 38 millimeters, so a Goldilocks size, mechanical movement. It's kinda a must-have in a collection. I'm making myself want one, good grief. I'm gonna buy one now, I can feel it. But one more thing, I'd be kicking myself if I didn't at least mention the brand new Khaki Field Expedition. While it's not as entry level price at 1,000 pounds, it's a top go anywhere, do anything, rugged, sporty watch. I'd get 37 millimeters, but it's also available in 41. Longines is so underrated and I know I need to talk about them more. For entry level Longines, I'd recommend something mechanical. Maybe the flagship Heritage, some strong JLC master control vibes, but only costs 1,500 pounds. Now it's not that that's nothing, that's still quite expensive, but you get a lot of awesome watch for that money. For something a bit sportier, and well, it's not really an entry level Longines, it's just my favorite in their current catalog. It's the Spirit Zulu Time. Quite a price jump, so this one is 3,000 pounds, but just look at it. It's a lot sportier, 100 meters of water resistance, 39 millimeter case size. You can't argue with this. Am I about to be really biased and name a Nomos that I have? Yes. I, I love Nalmos so much, but my favorite watch in their catalog and also their best entry level model is the Club and the Club Campus. So the Club Campus retails for 1,400 and the normal Club for 1,300 pounds. These are classic, but still fun. Some are quite bright, but still robust with 100 meters of water resistance in stainless steel and the in-house Alpha Caliber. If you care about in-house calibers, Nalmos has to be on your radar. 
Brittany likes Tudor? I know, it seems almost unbelievable because I never talk about them. But Tudor also delivers bang for buck. For me, the starting place with Tudor would either be with the fixed bezel black base, so the Black Bay 31, 36, 39, or 41, or perhaps something from their classic collection like the 1926. Both are great, go anywhere, do anything watches, available in lots of size options. Both have 100 meters of water resistance. The fixed bezel black bay is just that wee bit sportier, so it depends on what style you're more after. Before we get into number seven, and I have so much to say about this, we need to thank today's fabulous video sponsor, Surfshark. Do you ever want to compare prices online to find the best possible price? Of course you do. Or unblock content on streaming platforms, or maybe even keep your banking info safe online. Who doesn't want all those things? And Surfshark can do all those things for you. So I've been using Surfshark for a few years now because I love TV and British Netflix just wasn't enough for me. So I use Surfshark to watch American, Canadian, anywhere in the world Netflix, but it's not limited to just that. You can find better deals online by changing your virtual location, which is quite handy for those big ticket items like flights, rental cars, maybe even watches, if you have a problem like me. This is my fourth time partnering with Surfshark, I think, I think it's fourth. And one thing I haven't said before, one Surfshark, Surfshark, one Surfshark subscription can be used on unlimited devices. So if you go, hit that link in the description, code Gringo will get you an additional three months of Surfshark and Surfshark One membership only costs £2.17 a month. And you can share it with the whole family. That's value for money, baby. Go right now, click that link, give it a try. There's a 30 day money back guarantee. So there's no risk in giving it a go. Thank you so much to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. And uh, let's talk about the tank solo, or the tank must, I should say. So this is another watch I'm incapable of being unbiased about. The tank solo, or now known as the tank must, is an icon of Cartier and a fantastic starting place with the brand. So for a large solar bee, it costs £2,940. You'll be getting one of the most timeless watch designs ever, an insanely cool movement, and a watch you just don't see every day. This is gonna be the longest video ever if I don't hit the gas a little bit. Speed round, next three, let's go. IWC, how am I supposed to rapid fire this? They have so many good ones. When I think of IWC, it has to be a pilot's watch. So let's go for my favorite. The Spitfire is in that Goldilocks zone at 39 millimeters, high legibility, and just a dang good looking watch. Next, Breitling, another brand that I associate with pilot's watches, but their best entry level watch, in my humble opinion, would be a Super Ocean. They retail for about £4,000, and they're just an awesome little dive watch. Okay, Grand Seiko, how am I supposed to rapid fire this? I've got so many thoughts. So, I'm in two minds because if I was to buy a Grand Seiko, I would really, really want a spring drive movement. But is that entry level? It would probably be Grand Seiko Quartz as entry. So there's two I'm thinking about here. In the Quartz department, the SBGP, 005, under 3,000 pounds, and still that classic Grand Seiko look. But I'd want to enter Spring Drive territory, and I'd want to stay in the Heritage Collection. So the SBGA 469, <laughs> how beautiful is this? That is a great watch. Moving on to Omega, I'm trying to get out of the doghouse with Omega lovers right now. Omega lovers, I love you. So my heart says this should be one of the icons like the Seamaster Diver 300 or the Speedmaster, but I think the true entry point for Omega is the Railmaster. Omega has been seeing some real price hikes. I can't tell if I'm stuck in pre-pandemic pricing, but if you ask me what the Speedmaster costs, in my head, it's 4,000 pounds. But it's so much higher now. So the Seamaster Diver 300 is priced at 5,600 pounds on the bracelet and the Speedy at 6,600 pounds for the Hesalite. Inflation, it's crazy. But the Railmaster retails for 4,350 pounds, 40 millimeter case, coaxial master chronometer movement, and it's just an Omega that's a little bit different. Big fan of the Railmaster. I've never been shy about how much I love the Oyster Perpetual. And we're now at the point of the list where I have to remind everyone of our definition at the beginning. I know when we say Rolex, people think, Rolex, that's not entry level. Grand Seiko, that's not ev entry level. But it's an entry level to the brand. It's a price point and availability that's a little bit more accessible. 
So the Oyster Perpetual, namely if you like the more classic color OPs, are becoming more available again in the authorized dealers, and some secondary prices have even fallen below retail. My OP is my go anywhere, do anything watch. It's one I'm gonna be wearing forever, even when I'm an old lady. It's that perfect size at 34 millimeters, 100 meters of water resistance, and every single size you can find has a mechanical automatic movement. Looking at the time, I'm still taking too long. Let's do the final four speed round again. Okay, number 13, Jujur Le Coot. And it, it would be one of the icons that I recommend, but I wouldn't recommend going quartz with JLC. I think they're too overpriced. I'd say a reverso, monoface, stainless steel, manual winding movement, class on the wrist, but I would try to get a cheeky discount. Okay, next, Vacheron Constantin. And I know VC isn't entry level. This is like end game kind of watchmaking, but there is still entry level watches you can get into the Holy Trinity. The real entry level point is with the 56 self-winding, incredibly priced at 12,200 pounds, but you really do miss out on the movement that you would want from Holy Trinity level watchmaking, in my opinion. Entry level sports watch with VC, Geneva seal would have to be the overseas. I'd go black dial and it's double the price at 24,000 pounds, but it's more of the degree of finishing I'd want if I'm entering the Holy Trinity. Also the traditional, there's juicy discounts in the secondary market. Number 15, Along in Zona. I'm trying to say it right, Germans. I'm doing my best. But the only place to start with ALS is with the Saxonia Thin. Still not cheap at 22,900 pounds, but beautiful watches, beautiful craftsmanship. Once again, grail level brand. This is finishing tier, but the way to enter into Patek Philippe. I would go with one of my favorite watches in their catalog as well, the Calatrava. For a man or someone who likes larger watches, the 6119 Classic Patek Guilloche Hub Nail Pattern Bezel. It's so Patek and costs 25,700 pounds. For a lady or a smaller option, the 7200, my personal favorite Patek in the catalog. If I could just come up with 25 grand. Whew. It's hot in here. This is the watch I'd like to start my Patek journey with one day when I win the lottery. And they're quite easy to get from the authorized dealer as well. Wow, I'm really not good at these speed rounds. Anyways, these are my favorite entry level watches from my favorite brands. I'd love to know in those comments down below. Did I miss any of your favorites? Did I miss any big ones? Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Come on now. And let's thank the Pope tier patrons.